Hello and welcome to my video. Most EVs these days use a liquid cooling thermal management system and the ocean is no different. The need to cool or heat the battery pack to keep it in a sweet spot is very important. That's why the coolant pumps are arguably the most important parts of the car. I know firsthand since I had a water pump break in my Tesla Model 3 and it required me to get it serviced immediately. I'll be covering the water pumps and present an overview of the coolant system. Let's get started. The water pumps you see in this video are from VIN 2554, which had 936 miles on the odometer before it had a crash that rendered the car totaled. So basically it gave up these water pumps in the name of science and I purchased them. The vehicle was manufactured in July 2023, so fairly early production. I did a deep dive on this car and found out that it sold for $15,500 on Copart on May 6, 2024, and it was sold in California. My car has a VIN of 4947 and was made about two months later. So here are the four coolant pumps on the Fisker Ocean. I have them sorted by part number. This is 22A, 26A, 28A, and 29A. The first one here is the recalled water pump and it is for the heater or cabin. The next one is 26A, which is energy storage, which is the battery pack. And then these two are for the drivetrain. So this is the front motor and this is the rear motor. And as I mentioned, the part numbers are in sequence here. I have these orientated so that the mounting is on the bottom and you can see that the shape of them is slightly different. This one is pointing that way, these two to the upper left and this one a little more straight. And if I look at these two, these two are extremely similar. There's a little bit of a number marking difference on the top here. And also when you look at underneath at the plate, it has the part numbers. And that's really the only difference I see between these two. Maybe these could be interchanged. I'm not sure, we'll have to find out in the future. More info on the pump itself. The intake where the coolant enters is here, which is on the top. This is where the coolant enters the pump and then it exits parallel to the impeller. So right here you can see this is the impeller here and this is where the coolant exits. So all of them have the entrance on the top and the exit on the side. On this side of the pump, this metal area here with the nubs, this is a heat transfer plate that cools the motor inside the pump. Also on this side is the power port and communications for the pump that controls it. Inside, there's a circuit board, which hopefully I'm gonna be able to open up and show you in a future video. And then around the outside of the pump itself, you can see it is rubber and flexible and fairly soft. This is for mounting the pump to the car itself and it's rubber to eliminate noise, vibration, and harshness, also called NVH for short. Basically the pump is isolated and it keeps it quiet. And that's it, it's a fairly simple device. Now I'm going to show you where these pumps are located under the hood. There are three coolant loops in the Fisker Ocean, one for the battery pack called energy, one for the drivetrain, which includes the motors and inverter, one pump for the front wheel drive sport, and two pumps for the all wheel drive ultra extreme and one. And finally, one called the heater in the service manual and called cabin in the recall. And then this one works with the cabin HVAC system. To determine where the pumps are, look for the associated surge tanks, aka overflow tanks, aka reservoirs. The pumps are usually close by. On the left side, we have the energy storage tank, which is right there. 
and the pump for it is right here. It's the most easily accessed pump in the car. Right under the hood, you can get to it. So this pump supplies coolant to the battery pack. In this area here, if you go straight down below, that is the pump for the front motor. Straight underneath the 12 volt battery pack is the water pump for the rear motor. So this is marked front wheel drive and that's marked all wheel drive. So those two are in this area. They provide coolant to both the motors and also the equipment in this area, including the power inverters. Anything like this requires coolant because these get very hot because of the transfer. You can see all the high voltage cabling that goes to it from the battery pack. So this needs to get cooled as well as the motor and the motor is right here. Let's have a closer look inside. The front motor pump is the easiest one to see, and it's right down below here. The outflow goes through this pipe right here, and this goes into the inverter and drivetrain modules. And then this goes into the inverter and also the motor. So all those components are cooled in this vicinity here. There's an outlet that comes out here and then goes down into the motor and eventually comes out of the motor right there and then routed into the heat exchanger or radiator area up front. Now for the heater or cabin tank, that's right here and the pump for it is way down below. You can't really see it from the position under the hood. It's only accessed from underneath the car. In fact, this pump and these two pumps here have to be accessed from underneath the car. And I discussed that in my water pump recall video. If you haven't seen it, it's in the top right of the screen right now. You can click on that and it gives you a whole process of the recall, uh, TSB, what needs to be done for that water pump and replacing it. And if you also look in this area here, there is a liquid cool condenser. Though not explicit in the recall reports, my hunch is that the failure of the cabin water pump on the LIN6 communication bus is also affecting the operation of the other pumps. The errors that the cars give indicate that the battery and drivetrain are not getting proper coolant, and those are two other loops in the system. The cabin water pump affects the coolant in the cabin's HVAC system. Though there are shared components between the loops such as heaters and a chiller, as well as an evaporator and radiator. Second, I feel that the cabin water pump is failing from moisture causing problems with the pump's circuit board, either not enough or improper application of water sealant on this board. The pump is located very, very low in the body of the vehicle and is most likely susceptible to moisture coming in from the underside of the vehicle, much more likely than the other three pumps in this area. Of course, that's just my opinion. As far as removal and replacement of the water pumps, the easiest, as I mentioned, is the one for the energy system or the battery, which is located right here. Very easy to get to. The two for the Motors here are underneath, and then the one for the cabin is the furthest down. So these three here, you have to have the car lifted up, the lower body panel removed, and then you can access those pumps. The service manual gives full explanation of how to do that for all of these pumps in the system. By the way, if the reservoir tanks are below the minimum line, it's a good idea to fill them to that line. For North America, the coolant used is Prestone Dexcool Premix 5050. And for what I found out in Europe, it used Artico Havoline 
XLC. If you have inconsistent levels in the three tanks, for example, one is above the max line and the other two are below the min line, you could move some coolant from one to the other between the reservoirs. And I've seen people do this using a regular turkey baster, obviously clean, to suck some of the coolant out of one tank and to put it in another. Since all these tanks use the same coolant, it's not a big deal. However, if any of the surge tanks are below the line, you may need to fill those up individually. Though that is pretty rare in a new car to have that issue. And if you do need to replace the water pump, I would think any auto shop that repairs cooling systems should be able to fix it. I would supply the pages from the service manual or the TSB to make everything clear. And of course, we'll need to have the fixed water pumps for the recall. And that's assuming that something doesn't happen from Fisker or the bankruptcy that provides us the water pumps and replacement. It's up in the air right now what's going to happen with that. I don't have the schematics for the Fisker's Ocean 3 coolant loop, so I can't give you a detailed view of that, and it's also way beyond the scope of this video. The water pumps are a little bit of a misnomer since they use coolant mixed with water, so more accurately, they are coolant pumps. Another thing is that they don't just cool whatever they're connected to, they can also heat. So in the summer with high temperatures, the car needs to cool certain components like the battery to keep it as close to 70 degrees Fahrenheit as possible. The same in the winter, you have cold temperature where the battery pack needs to be warmed up. And other areas like the drivetrain that needs constant cooling both in the summer and the winter, so that loop is just chilled. So the three loops in the system also share components. There's two heaters that I'm aware of, a 3.5 kilowatt and a 6 kilowatt. And the other parts include evaporators, radiator, and depending if you have a heat pump, an outside heat exchanger. And then for the non-heat pump system, a condenser. As I mentioned, there's two PTC heaters, a liquid cool condenser, a gas liquid separator, a battery chiller, AC compressor, and all these keep everything working. We also have a refrigerant system that's used by the HVAC and condenser, which is another system related to the coolant. And then there's the heat pump. So I'd like to learn more about this system and how it works, especially the heat pump. But that's the limit of my knowledge today and what I'm presenting to you. And before I finish the video, I wanted to talk a little bit more about the labels on the water pumps themselves. I have all four of the pumps photos right here. The heater cabin on the upper left, energy storage upper right, the powertrain front wheel drive on the lower left, and the powertrain all wheel drive on the lower right. Looking at the label in the left hand corner, it has some sort of part number on it. Below that is the date of manufacturer. Below that is a number which most likely indicates the production number. There's a QR code. Then there's the Fisker part number, a made in China label. And then finally, there is either a one or two digit code on all of these. And what I think the meaning of them is for the heater cabin has an LH, and I also know that there's an RH. So the LH indicates the left-hand drive, and the RH is right-hand drive, and this means the pumps are specific to those markets, uh, RH being the UK market and the LH being the rest of Europe and North America. And for the powertrain, I think what makes the best sense is that the F stands for the front motor and the R stands for the rear motor. And finally, for the energy storage, B most likely means battery. And that's it for the water pumps. And that's about it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. I had fun doing it. If you have any other questions about what's going on under the hood, please let me know and I can work on a future video on that. And if you have just any general comments or questions, please leave them down below. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.